All right, kids, today we are going to run through the Yamaha THR 230. Uh, I've been looking for a good couch amp for a while. Uh, up to now, it's been my Hanwire Tweed Lux with some uh, Strymon pedals, and obviously that's a slightly more complex rig. I've also got a wireless receiver connected to it, and it's pretty loud, and I'm living in a semi-detached right now. So volume is a concern. Uh, I've owned all three previous Yamaha THRs. Overall, extremely impressed with them. Um, I picked up this THR 30 yesterday. <clears throat> the first impressions were excellent. Uh, fast forward, not even 24 hours. And I'm starting to see, you know, some of the imperfections that you probably won't hear about. Uh, in many of the demos. Um, I don't get uh, kickbacks, of course. My videos are unpolished turds for the most part. Uh, so I like to keep it really real. Um, so I'm just going to share with you uh, my insight on this unit. Um, overall, I think it's overpriced, to be honest. But I also think most new gear is overpriced because I buy everything used on Kijiji. So maybe I'm just a cheap ass. Um, but I think this ran me almost 700 Canadian, so that's about, it's a good 500 bucks US. And, uh, yeah, so anyways, I won't keep yakking. Uh, I was going to use microphones and my sound card, but I'm too damn lazy and I don't, you know, this channel is just for fun for me. In case you haven't noticed already, um, A, I don't make money off it. B, nobody pays me to do this shit. I just do it for fun and and people watch. So here we go. Um, we'll start with a, an SG. I highly, highly, highly recommend anybody using uh, the THRs that have Bluetooth application functionality. Uh, well, even the previous versions, I know you could run the desktop software um, this is key to unlocking uh, more sounds and better sounds. Um, for example, before I even installed the app, I was playing around with the THR. I thought it was pretty good, but I installed the app and uh, just quickly created a patch. And just by enabling like the compressor on a clean channel, just gave me that wow factor. I was, I was pretty blown away and as well as changing the cabs. You have a number of cabs that are available here, which is pretty cool. Um, so here we go. So let's start with a clean tone. This is clean classic. To the app and um, I'm finding it kind of that was kind of trebly and harsh so I'm gonna bring the treble down uh, the compressor is on um, just to show you the sound of cabs this is a one American 1 by 12 now let me change that to a American 4 by 12 Juicy 4x12. Here's an American 2x12. to the uh, American 1x12. As you can see, the sounds differ considerably. I'm finding the compression a little bit too much there. Uh, I'm going to take off the compressor. So let's 
let's go to boutique now. Now this is the kind of most mid-focused, kind of tweedy, thin, raspy tone out of all of the, the modes and amps. So, as I'm in boutique, now I realize I can do all this from here. It's just out of habit I've been using the knobs. That's why I keep turning to the amp, but... Um, let me go back here to boutique and... Let's pick a boutique 2x12 cap. So we'll try a few caps. This is the boutique crunch. Boutique 2 by 12. Here's that juicy 4 by 12 again. So, right there is clearly. Uh, you can really see just how different uh, one cab sounds from the other. I mean, it's it's night and day. So versus a one by twelve or this one by twelve. So, anyways, I think I got my point across there. The cabs, uh, like any kind of IR usage. Uh, opens up a whole bunch of tones. So, um, I made a few presets here. Now here, so I'm going to show you, uh, I'm not too sure if this is a bug or just inherent in the THR, but... Uh, so I created a patch. Right now, this is the lead uh, modern with a brown 4x12 cab. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles, throw on the compressor. I'm a big compressor guy, so uh, it's on in most of my patches. But here's where it gets interesting. So right now, the master's pointed at one. The guitar is past, just a bit past three. And the gain is just past 12. Now watch what happens when I turn the master knob just a bit to the right. I am pretty sure that this is a undocumented feature, as we say in IT, in the IT world, uh, basically a bug. Uh, so basically, how I found this out is, um, you know, I can change a preset. Let's, now let's go back to that patch. Now touch the master. There's like a massive spike in uh, in volume. Anyways, not a big deal, but uh, I did notice from bouncing around patches and amps, I did notice some pretty significant volume uh, spikes, which got it was a little annoying. <laughs> Anyways, this thing 
definitely excels in high gain tones. I mean, if you're into high gain, I'm not even going to bother going through all the high gain sounds. There's videos on YouTube where uh, they go through all the different amps and all the sounds. And uh, I just wanted to show you uh, some of my experiences. So uh, I play a lot of acoustics. So this is a really big deal for me. And it could be a deal breaker and a big reason why I return this. I'm not um, blown away by the acoustic uh, and I'm sure, you know, most people buying this, they're not buying it to be an acoustic amp. But there's a lot of acoustic players out there. So let's uh, unlock my damn phone. Uh, where's my acoustic? I've got a Taylor 414 CE here. Plug this guy in. We're going to go to the acoustic classic. So, uh, this is interesting. Okay, so I just found out that um, the bass acoustic... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, so the app doesn't seem to do anything. Oh wow, this is really weird. Okay. So it appears that if you go to acoustic or bass or flat, you lose the connection. I don't know if that's another bug, but basically I just lost my connection to the THR. So, all right, screw the app. I'm not a big fan of apps, by the way, to be honest. This is the, f uh, that was a flat. Let's go to the acoustic amp. We'll crank the master. The guitar is almost max. I'll take all the effects off for now. but it's the acoustic amp. Uh, let's try the boutique acoustic. Modern acoustic. I know how good my Taylor sounds, and this certainly does not uh, highlight the quality of sound from this guitar. This guitar sounds friggin' amazing. Um, so yeah, this is where the effects are key. So I'll dial in a little bit of reverb. So I, I went on the hall, pretty light. I think I prefer the boutique myself. The treble hardly does anything on the acoustic amp, which I find kind of weird. So I'll dime the guitar, dime the master. So now that it's dimed, I'm hearing a very strange metallic teeny sound. Just not good. There's actually a bit of a little bit of feedback there. So really not impressed whatsoever with the acoustic. I would say now I haven't even tried a bass yet. So get ready to possibly laugh. Now, I ain't a bass player. Um, I've got uh, quite a few beautiful high-end guitars, but 
All I need is a bass to record sometimes, a basic bass line. So this is your, uh, don't even know what the model is. Oh, it's an RBX 260. I think I paid about 80 US for it, used on Kijiji. Does the trick. So just for shits and giggles, let's go to the bass. better than I expected. Not too bad. This is the classic. Very nasally. vibrations in the THR as well. Right there. So I just confirmed it's not the box. It's actually some weird, uh, it does not like that frequency at all. Seems to like all the other notes though. Okay, so you guys got to hear this up close. think this was designed for acoustic and bass amps. I think they threw it in there just to kind of add more features. So let's go back to guitars, which is what most electric guitars, which is what most people are going to buy this for. And um, I was impressed with the clean tones. I play a lot of clean, a lot of blues. The older I get, the less high gain I play. So Here's how I would go about dialing in a, a quick, good, clean tone. So, I did make a preset before. We'll go back to this one. So there we go. There's that spike again. So I changed my preset. I, all I did was barely touch the master and the volume's like, what the fuck? So I gotta bring that down. So let's go back to this app. So right now, oh great, I'm not even connected. So this is the part about apps that kind of fucking suck, I'm not gonna lie. So now I've got to pair it again. So I've got to hit the Bluetooth button until it starts blinking. There we go. So now I should be able to connect. Now I'm connected. Oh, now I'm connected. Yep. All right. So 
if I hit my preset, that takes me to the clean boutique. <laughs> using the Fuel 4x12 cab with the compressor on. This is the classic crunch. to a British Blues 2x12. spend time finding the right uh, cab, the right effects, the right EQ. So I'm going to take off the delay. Let's just leave the reverb on. Clean classic with an American 1x12. This is how it sounds. Compressor on. So let's just bring down the sustain. And if I want a bluesy tone, I'd have to go to the crunch. This is a boutique 2x12. So that's more like it. So right now I'm on crunch boutique with a boutique 2x12. This would be a good jazz tone. And then, of course, we can go back to the rock and roll. <laughs> So, I my, when it comes to high gain, it's the actual high gain amp that I like the most. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's go back to my trusty first patch. Considering at this price point, I uh, must admit, not too impressed with the fact that I'm stuck with one delay. Um, you've got your time, feedback, bass, treble, and mix. Um, and that's it. Like, at least reverb, they've thrown in four different reverbs. Spring, room, plate, and hall with the app. But you're stuck with this one delay, which is a good one. <laughs> Sounds like a tape delay. So, yeah, that's another one of my gripes. It's got a noise gate, which is cool. Really glad they threw in the compressor. You've only got the two uh, controls for compressor sustain and level. Uh, so let's go back to the cab. Let's go pick that juicy 4x12. See, massive, massive difference, at least in the room. It's much fatter and just nice and warm. distortion or overdrive or boost or something like you know even if i had to press a button on the app to get like you know engage a tube screamer would be really nice and there's none of that you basically got to find your sound program it it's got five presets that's another beef that i have with this thing only five presets considering the amount you've got technically one, two, three, four, five. If we don't count the flat, you've got seven amps times the modern boutique and classic mode. So that's 21, 21 major sounds. And then you throw in all the cabs. I think they give you about what? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 cabs. Do the math. So 16 times like 15, I mean, you've got a lot of possibilities and to only give you five presets I think is pretty lame uh, so yeah so that's pretty much it guys high gain really excels if you just want to wail and rip on solos um, I'm uh, I'm not a great player that's for sure you've probably noticed that from watching my videos but 
I am quite versatile in that I like to play everything from uh, classical on a nylon string to steel string dreadnought guitars to blues. I like playing clean on a Strat. I mean, I'm all over the map. I like jazz. I like everything. And um, overall, I thought I was going to be more impressed. Uh, I, I was a huge fan of the THR 10X. That was my favorite one. Um, love that thing. Uh, I've done videos on that. You can go through my channel and find videos on that. Um, but overall for the 30, I'd say I find it's overpriced considering the amount of imperfections. Um, it's going back to the store today. So anyways, that's it. Cheers. If you like it, video, hit like, subscribe, all that bullshit to you. Bye.